Welcome back, folks, to the series on the Academy of Titans of CNC Basic Blocks. Today we're covering Block 3, a block I liked so much, I made two of them. Starting off here at Fusion, I'm not going to go over the CAD. It's really simple. The 3M does not have any challenges from a CAD perspective. The function of the 3M is to make yourself some soft jaws. The easiest way to do that is to go ahead and set yourself up a sketch of your soft jaws. You're going to do a sketch of the, of the perimeter of your part. And you're going to do a sketch of two rectangles. Those are your soft jaws. Soft jaws are just aluminum or softened steel. And you just loft that out as a soft jaw. It's really simple. Um, the one thing I did do with my soft jaws is if you notice... Here's this corner. I'm actually going to, instead of trying to find this, the center of this round object or something else, I'm going to find this corner, specifically the bottom of this, so the bottom of this platform and then this edge and this edge. Um, and then I know where my part is versus that. So just wanted to show that real quick. Now let's get to what you care about, the cutting video. Uh, real quick, I'm running on a 5x video here, so uh, I'm not this fast, and my machine's not this fast. But 5x, it's standard speeds. I kind of do that regularly. Music for us today is going to be Nat Keefe and the Bowties playing Ruben's Train, and uh, let's get started with the soft jaws. <laughs> And there's that soft draw on the two stations. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, find our work coordinates for the first stop. Surfacing, running at uh, 65 inches a minute. Here we're running at 70 inches a minute. Obviously, this is 5x of that. So, 3 8 inch in mil. Makes quick work of that aluminum. Here's that really thin 16th inch end mill, and you can see, whew, it's a little scary right there. And we're going to go ahead and chamfer the edges and spot drill. I use that ring coolant, and it works pretty well. You'll see why I don't use it all the time here in a sec. Actually, right now. See how it just can't quite get an angle on these uh, bigger tool holders. And here we're going ahead and tapping. This is a form tap. Leverage of tapping. Zeroing that corner like I talked about earlier. Picking up that coordinate. And it's just two quick ops to finish off the part here. Done. 
So why did I make two parts? Well, the first part came out great and historically I've been happy with the machine, but there's been some issues in arcs that I haven't quite solved. At first I thought it might've been in my actual G code, but the G code was running an arc routine, so there's no reason there should have been any issue. If you look on the right though, you will see subtle vertical striations. Those are reflections of the fact that it's actually made up of small flat uh, planes. In other words, it's, it's a polygon, not a circle. It's a I don't know, 60 or 100 facet polygon, maybe even more, maybe, maybe 200 facet polygon, but it's still a polygon, not a circle, not a clean arc. Well, I thought it might have been a controller or my G code. It turned out to be servo settings. So working with the Skyfire form and shout out to uh, Jason and uh, Jean and Triple Tree. Um, for figuring this out, but we basically tuned up the servos. It's new settings for anybody with the Skyfire, and those, you can see the part on the left has got a very smooth shape to it, and that's exactly what we wanted. We want a nice, smooth arc where there's an arc. Overall, the rest of the part's identical. The routine didn't change. We actually literally just reran the same G-code, so you can, this shows you what you can do just in tuning your servos if you if you're using servers or tuning your steppers, if you're using steppers and maybe you're missing steps. All in all, another great part. I think the things you take away from the 3M, if you're going through this curriculum or you're wondering, this looks like an easy part, why am I doing it? The 3M gives you a couple of things. One, that tiny 16th of an inch, uh, what I would call O-ring groove, is, is nerve wracking. It is nerve wracking to take a very, very small bit and have it cut aluminum. I'm eventually going to make this in steel and titanium. I have no clue how nervous I'm going to be when it, that bit touches those, that different bit touches those materials. So confidence building on making small detailed features. And then the soft jaws can't understate the value. Basically any shape that doesn't have two parallel sides, you're going to have to learn how to make soft jaws. So jumping into soft jaws right off of part number three is a good foundation. There are two other round parts in the series. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go out of order and go ahead and do those parts because I have the soft jaws in place to do them, or if I'm gonna to stick to order, which is gonna force me to learn how do I realign these soft jaws later. If you have a preference as to whether or not I should learn how to realign soft jaws later, or I should go ahead and do the round parts next, leave a comment below, I'd love to hear it. If you liked what you saw, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. And either way, go ahead and hit that subscribe and notify button. Thanks for watching. And now this is recording. Okay, cool. So now everything is recording. Hi. Hi. I'm putting this in the end of the video. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Done. <laughs>